Oh, a sad and devastating end this morning. After days of holding out some hope, they'd be found alive. Yesterday, a lot of people's worst fears came true. Yeah, we first told you about the missing plane earlier this week after receiving a call from close friends. Here's what we've learned so far. Albuquerque teacher Melissa Watson and her boyfriend and pilot Howard Guthrie were last seen Friday when they took off from the Moriarty Airport in his plane, but went silent after Guthrie turned his plane around because of bad weather. Sadly, yesterday crews in southern Colorado found the wreckage along with the bodies of both passengers. That crash is now st still being investigated. It will be a very difficult morning for family, friends and the students of the Albuquerque second grade teacher. Today, counselors will be on hand at Via Vista Elementary where she taught. Last night, a vigil was held there. It has been very difficult. We were all praying that everything would turn out differently, but unfortunately it didn't. As can be imagined, emotions ran high as dozens gathered for the vigil, shedding tears and remembering 42-year-old Watson. I can say she was a good teacher. <laughs> she helped kids <laughs> as much as she could. And that's been the sentiment from all students we talked to. Many saying she was an amazing teacher. Watson leaves behind a son. She's a fifth grader at Via Vista. Guthrie leaves behind a daughter who on Facebook thanked people for their support and love. Well, at 5.02 now, a busy road in Albuquerque is back open this morning after another deadly pedestrian crash last night. This happened in Montgomery at Pennsylvania Northeast. Police say the person was walking across Montgomery when a car going west hit and killed the person. The car took off, but police caught up to it pretty quickly. Investigators have not said if the driver will face any charges and have not said who the person is who died. Well, more traffic trouble could be on the way for you. Yeah, but before orange barrels go up, they want you to put in your input. That's city officials. News 13's Catherine Rizone is live at Adelia on 528 in Rio Rancho with what we know so far. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal. Now, Rio Rancho officials say there's just too much traffic for Adelia. It's become a heavily traveled road, especially with the new Sandoval County building behind me. A Rio Rancho officials say that Adelia has reached the end of its life. They say the pavement needs to be repaired and replaced. It's become a high traffic area, and now Rio Rancho wants to expand it. The portion of Adelia that could be changed stretches from Highway 528 to Iris Road. In April, the city discussed several options. Each would add bike lanes, curbs, and sidewalks. Option three could add an additional lane for each direction, turning Adelia into a four-lane road. But adding more lanes for cars and bikers and walkers is only part of the proposed project. Officials say there's a big need for storm drains in the area. Sanitary sewer and water line improvements are also part of the plan. Now, the city of Rio Rancho Public Works Director says there's just more pa traffic than when they first paved the road. He says the proposed improvements will also take into account additional growth. Now, all this will be discussed at tonight's meeting. Uh, coming up in our next half hour, we'll have the cost of the proposed plan. Back to you. All right, thanks for that information, Catherine. Now, city officials want to hear from you tonight at tonight's meeting before the project is finalized and it goes out to bid. The meeting is from 6 to 7.30 at Rio Rancho City Hall. That's at 3200 Civic Center Circle. Well, the traditional Luminaria tour in Albuquerque will still be aglow this year after a neighborhood threatened to hold it hostage. This is all about the city thinking about making some changes, major ones, to Rio Grande and Central. People near there were not happy with one idea to cut off access to their neighborhood off Rio Grande. They wrote letters, they spoke up at meetings, but they say none of that was working, so... To get attention, the neighborhood really, in quite serious fashion, was not going to provide luminarias for the annual luminaria tour. So basically, the neighborhood is planning to go dark on Christmas Eve if the city did not scrap that particular part of the plans. And that would have meant no luminarias on the big tours that go through there. And whether it was that backlash from businesses or something else, the city is no longer planning on going ahead with the plan for the intersection. That part of it, that is. That means the luminarias will be business as usual. President Obama is expected to outline his executive action on immigration tonight, but some in Congress oppose the president's plan. The president will detail his plans that could spare as many as 5 million people from deportation, following through on his promise to act without the consent of Congress. Now, under his plan, those would be eligible for work permits, but Republicans say the plan will lead to more illegal immigration. 
Among steps, Republicans are considering suing the president and cutting the funding needed to make the plan work. Many fear it could lead to another government shutdown. Meanwhile, another border issue was sparking a protest here in Albuquerque today. Protests have been growing ever since Mexican authorities revealed that 43 students were handed over by corrupt police officers to the Guerros Unidos gang. Members confessed to murdering the students and burning their bodies. Now the outrage is spilling over the border. Today, there's a planned rally at the Mexican consulate here in Albuquerque. Here are some facts about today's rally. The International Day of Action and Solidarity will host the rally outside the consulate near 4th and Bellama. Demonstrators will gather around 5.30 today. Well, 5.06 now. Albuquerque police are still on the hunt for whoever shot and killed a 15-year-old boy yesterday. Police say that teen was shot early yesterday morning here near Central and 57th Street. He died at the hospital. Police have not released his name, nor have they said if they know who pulled the trigger. And a former New Mexico police detective will spend nearly a decade behind bars for sexually assaulting a teenage intern. Michael Garcia was working for Las Cruces Police in the Child Abuse and Sex Crimes Unit when he sexually assaulted a teen during a ride-along back in 2011. Yesterday, Garcia was sentenced to nine years behind bars and will have his law enforcement certification revoked. He's also accused of molesting a 12-year-old girl, but that case is still pending. The student ride-along program has been suspended since this case. Former Rio Riva County Sheriff Tommy Rodella is set to be sentenced next month, and the feds are asking the judge in the case to throw the book at him. Rodella was found guilty of roughing up a driver and violating his civil rights in a newly filed sentencing report. Federal prosecutors are asking for a strict sentence. Rodella is facing between 7 and 17 years in prison. They say Rodella has abused his power for 20 years and gotten away with it, citing his misconduct as a magistrate judge and suspension as a state cop. Rodella is fighting for a new trial in this case.